What is up, you guys? Welcome, Welcome to, to the Kojo, Kojo Show. Show. I'm your host, Joseph O'Brien. And I'm your sketchier host, Kobe James. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about music. Let's talk about life. We started a podcast. Yes, we did now. We started a podcast. It's the Kojo Show. Yo, Joseph, did we make a podcast? Uh, I guess we did. Do you think anybody's going to listen? Yeah, absolutely not. Kojo! Updates on life. Joseph, what's been going on in your life, man? I I, I haven't thought about this at I all. I know this I, is like we're kind of thrown into this. This one. is super off the cuff. Um, I know. so today this is super like random, but I went to the best Italian restaurant I have ever been to in the Nashville area. What what what's that? I w- an Italian restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> no, like what? What restaurant? It's a place where you consume. <laughs> Italian food. They have bread. They have <laughs> much bread. <laughs> a lot. Movie bread. Yes, garlic. Where'd you go? We went to this place called Mama Mila's in Columbia. Oh. Columbia, Tennessee, which is like kind of a small town, not even Franklin, not Brentwood or your yeah. nice like upscale Nashville cities. It is down south. And it's run by this this woman. I think her name is like Mama Mila. Wow. And she makes the best Italian. I had lasagna. Oh, God. <laughs> really? It was so good. Oh, we're going to edit that out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was delectable. Everything was great. The salad had croutons I've never tasted before. They were like, I, I don't know. It was just top tier. So if you're in Colombia and you're wanting good Italian, I, I mean, I'm no Italian chef, but if you're wanting good Italian, go check out Mama Mila's Mama in Mila's. Colombia. What about you, sir? What has been a good update for that you? That is so interesting, Mama Mila's. I haven't been there. I need to check that out. Well, yeah, I just found out about it today, so now you should um, go. We should go. Well, today uh, I got up super early. I got up at six. So, Why? Um, so I've been, I, like I said, I haven't been going to the gym. You so went to the gym this I morning. I went to the gym at six, uh, 6.30. I'm so proud of you, bro. Dude, thanks. That's I, so good. I met Ashlyn. We went to the gym, um, and then I came back here. I wrote a song with you. Yes. So we had a session today. Uh, we wrote with our buddy Ross King. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was. I actually think this song's a winner. Like I think this song one actually like one of the best that I've written in the last like five months. It's cool. Although they they wrote verse two without me. And it's I, good. I checked it recent. Well, I checked it before. Yeah, and I, I have some notes, but I we bet. can. <laughs> Joseph always has notes about. <laughs> we can hit that later. He has notes about everything, but and it mostly. feels decent to me. Yeah, I think. Oh, I think it was a typo. That's why. Oh, there was a typo that I I think I need to fix. But we should. Oh no worries. And then I think it should be good. Yeah, actually. Well, it feels really really good. So I'm really stoked about it. I got actually. Do you want to help me with the demo with that? Yeah, we can do that. I um, I'll do. I got the guitars and stuff. But I just like what you do with drums. I think you're mm-hmm. you got and you've that little quirky production things that I like. Thanks. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we wrote a song and then I had a country artist come over at three or three thirty and we worked on um. This like I just cut her vocal, so that was fun, um, and that was kind of it. And now we're doing a podcast. It's been a long day. It's been yeah. I was gonna say. I mean, like I got up not at six, but I did get up. And uh, I'm not I trying w- to say I'm better than you. You, but are. I am. Today you were better than kidding. I was. I'm just. Kidding. I worked on a mix. I've been working on a mix for my dad. He's releasing a song with the Photo Sisters, which are two. It's like a string duo, and they they wanted me to mix their well produce and mix. You're their mixing. Song. I'm mixing. That's actually for those of you who don't know. I feel like mixing is the hardest part of production. Actually, as a producer, I if yeah. you produce the song, if you produce the song, mixing is incredibly difficult because your ears are so worn out and you overthink everything you've like yeah. recorded. I couldn't do it. Yeah, it's not my favorite, but nonetheless, I'm giving it a shot, and I think it sounds pretty good. I'll just send it to you. Get yeah, your, I want to hear your it. Thoughts. That's oh. super sick. So Maybe show and tell. Ooh, that's fun. That could be fun. I had a. I think I was gonna show our Christmas song for show and tell today. Okay. I thought I was gonna do that. So we'll see. Yeah. But um, let me see. I put some other stuff down for life updates. Um, we wrote a song today. Um, we're finally getting to the weekend. We're recording on a Friday, so yes. it's gonna be nice to just hit the weekend. Honestly, yeah, just, just rest. Well, I, I'm not resting. This where weekend. are you going? I, you, yeah, where are you going? I'm flying out to Florida to do what? To lead worship at a church, C3 Church, to be oh. exact. So if you're in Florida, Orlando area, and you want to visit a church, uh, go to C3 Church because I will be there. <laughs> this is it's not going to end. Out this October. Is, I ju- <laughs> as soon as I said that, I was like, no one's going to be seeing this until that's, October. That's amazing. So come on out to see through. <laughs> <laughs> it is September 9th. And so oh I will be there in October, though. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I just need to figure out what days. There but I'll go. be there most of actually October. There you go. Yeah. That's so, awesome. So yeah, what we'll time see. do you fly out tomorrow? Just noon. Oh, okay. So it's they're, they're nice to me. Yeah. I feel like most places I fly out are early morning. They are. Like, I feel like. I feel like early mornings are the worst time to fly too. Like I, whenever I go to shows, it's generally like 
you have to get up at 4.30 in the morning to get to the airport by mm-hmm. 5 because your flight's at 6. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. But, like, have you, like, noticed, like, the crazy lines? Like, just, like, with checking bags and stuff? Yes. It's bad. I actually went to the airport. Um, <laughs> that's so funny. It's like, did no, never mind. Let me just what? keep going. I'm what? Just, I'm, okay. just, I'm dumb. Right. Um, so I was going to the airport probably about two months ago, and it was 4.30 flight. Yeah. And in Nashville... The line was backed up, like for security, yeah. all the way to the check-in. Yeah, I was like at four thirty in the morning. So dude. don't be flying into Nashville dude. or flying out of Nashville at four thirty in the morning dude. and thinking it's going to be an easy are ride. You, are you TSA pre-checked? No, dude, you have to do it. Everyone keeps telling me that, but what, it you costs pay- like fifty bucks. Oh, only fifty? Like I heard 50. it was like a hundred. Dude, it's like fifty bucks for like five years. Yeah, dude, best fifty bucks I've ever spent in my entire life. I'm gonna burp. Hold on. Doubt sounds nice. Sorry. Um, yeah, Language. dude, it's insane. Like, for stuff like that, because I just flew internationally recently, mm-hmm. and it's, like, amazing for that kind of stuff. Because it's, like, those are tight flights that you have to make. And when TSA's backed up, dude, yeah. it's iconic. Yeah. This is a rabbit trail. We need to get back onto the, the, the podcast. This is a good, that's a good thing, though. I think this is what podcasts are all about. That's true. Maybe I'm... I'm, I'm rabbit good. trail's a good name for a podcast. Oh. I'm sure there's is. already, like, 50 of them. Dude, that was the hardest thing about, na- like coming up with the podcast name was yes. like everybody has a podcast everyone they just yeah. do every idea we came up with um i i searched on spotify yeah and would show kobe i was like it's taken it's taken it's taken but you know wasn't what or do you know what wasn't taken kojo show baby the kojo show was not kojo taken. Show, baby. not even the kojo podcast or anything kojo no really other than cody johnson yeah, yeah but that's not his name yeah it's just his brand so like there's t-shirts with uh the Kojo on yeah, it. But so. you'll you'll be able to tell. We're not yeah, very Western. We'll be fine. Hey, life update. Actually something that I want to do right now. Oh what? I've got a present for you. No way. Yes. I got a That's present. That's crazy because I have a present for you. We both have, fre- I have do. presents for each other. Yeah. Hold up, let me get mine. Okay, where's yours? <laughs> you just unplugged your headphones. <laughs> Dang! <laughs> Every just time. um, Ugh. you should have just put it on this counter, and I could have grabbed it for you. I just, um, I got I got my boy a little little Kobe James merch, guys. It's just me and you. This doesn't ah. happen very often. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I what caught a, that. What an entrance! To I can't let's go. It. I can't believe I caught that. Who oh, here? You show oh. it. This is my T-shirt, the Give Up on Love T-shirt. Can I see? Is this new? No, this is like a year old. Oh. So I got your old merch. Yeah, you That's got my awesome. old merch. No, this I, looks I, sick, actually. I'm d- I don't have any merch, so this is not available, but there will be merch in the future. Are you really into space? Uh, at the time. Remember my music video? Yeah, but like, w- w- are you into space? Yeah, I do love space. Really? Yeah. Huh. You see that new picture that NASA took or whatever? Uh, No. What is it? it was the galaxy? It's like the most high Well, I mean, like, I think I def- heard about a photo where it was like it looked further than it ever well, has it's or something. the most high def like, resolution photo of space you've ever seen. Oh. It's pretty cool. You would appreciate it. I should probably it. check that out. More it just in depth. makes you. It makes you go like, "Wow, that's there's a I god." I like starry nights. It makes nice. you go, "There's a god." But anyway, here you go. Take it. Thanks, bud. And then this is what mine. do you have for me? Uh, d- uh, guess what it is? No way. <laughs> here you go. It's it's a Kobe James T-shirt with a flower on it. Hold it up for the crew. Yeah, let's see here. Ooh. I've always loved Kobe's merch. Aww. It's always so simplistic and beautiful. So they're so fresh. We're they're, gonna, they're newer ones. They're newer we're designs. gonna change out of these, right? Yeah. We're going to, right now? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Okay. Oh, dang. This is a good Looks fit. good, man. I like this is it. A great fit. Let me see you. Yeah. Dude, mine looks sick. I'm into it. What size did you get me? Uh, um, I think it's a medium. It looks good. I like it. I should have got you a medium. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I actually like the large. It's a good shirt. It's a good look. I'm getting more into oversized fits anyway, so this is great. Yeah, okay, dude. It's, it's a cool shirt. Make the addition. That's a cool shirt. Okay. It looks good on you. I love this one, dude. This is actually great. I'm gonna I'm gonna use this all the time. It's, oh, thanks, it's cool because it's like actually like fashionable. Mm-hmm. Like I would buy this shirt if it was at like Abercrombie. You know what I mean? Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. I mean, I would definitely buy your stuff all the time. Yeah. I think I even offered to buy a bunch of your crap. Yeah, I said no. I was like, you're so weird. Okay. I'm not gonna <laughs> make you buy it. Anyway, that was life updates for you guys. <laughs> life updates. On to the next segment. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Show and tell. Show and tell. Show and tell. All right, cool. Show and tell. Here, uh, <laughs> sick. Okay, hey y'all, take a listen to this uh, song that my dad is doing. I'm shamelessly promoting him because he's my papa, daddy, he's papa, daddy. And this is called "Gimme Jesus." You already know it, but it's something that I mixed and excited for them to release it for Christmas. When I. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. 
Sounds so good. That was great. That sounded great. I loved it. We didn't get to hear it this week, so we had a little technical difficulties with the headphones. It's okay, Kobe will hear it at some point, and He's... he will react the same way he just did because I am that confident. It was it the best good. thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I loved it. What would you like to show with us, uh, or show for the people? As I'm well? going to show. Uh, me and Joseph wrote a Christmas song, and it's coming out like soon. Actually, I was supposed to send a vocal today for that, and I didn't. <gasps> Oh, oh no. I'll have to do it tomorrow. Anyways, um, it's called What Christmas is All About, and I'm obsessed with it. So, hope you are too. So many traditions I've been keeping, yeah. The decorations and the songs, I hold them so tight. But now I finally have a deeper meaning. Something worth more than silver or gold Cause you give me comfort and joy The hope of a savior I love this because it's like Christmas themed. <laughs> you I, were about to say something. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right. But, I was going to say that that's what Christmas is all about. Yeah, I was trying to figure it out. It's what it's about, baby. Exactly. Um, it's, a, it's a great song. I'm, and I can say that because you wrote it. Too well, we both wrote it. It's like you can't say that. Well, no, 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 no. Beautiful but experience. This is a real. This is a real thing. Like I could, if I just solo wrote that, I couldn't be like, "That's a great song." <laughs> that's true. <laughs> but like, just because we wrote it, I'm like, "That's yeah. a great." Because collectively, I feel proud of us. Yes. But like, if it was just like me, and I was like, "That's such a good song." That is so true. I think I've noticed that even in CCM. Like, if I were to have a song that I completely wrote by myself, I don't think I have the liberty to be like. Man, this is a great song. No. But like if I wrote it with two other guys, I, I'm way more free about like, man, I love this song or this is a great song. Like I think this yeah. is going to do really cool stuff. What is that? I don't know. But that's a real thing. It is a thing. I'm just obsessed with that song. Yeah. yeah. But, but it sounds really pretentious. I bet like in interviews, probably like we're like talking to people that yeah. don't know that multiple people wrote on it. And I'm like, mm-hmm. what do you like? So yeah, brand new. It's this new single. I love that song so much. I think yeah. it's, it's a great song. Like they're yeah. probably like this little cocky guy oh my you know? gosh but um that's so funny well i uh i liked your song joseph thank you yeah <laughs> i appreciate that um uh indie talent of the week i have an indie talent of the week okay yeah well, so we got... um we're gonna showcase uh, a writer that we actually worked with today uh ross king i love ross yeah he's ross a... is so cool he's the best he's one of the most <laughs> genuine guys i love I, him. I love ross to death he's one of uh, my favorite people in ccm and he deserves so much more credit than he gets uh and this podcast has probably not that many people listening to it, but this is it. You this, don't know. It's an extra boost. This could be like broadcast to millions so, of people for this third episode. So my exactly. So my favorite song that Ross has written at the moment is Things That I'm Afraid Of, which yeah. was cut by Josh, Josh Wilson. Wilson. Um, and it's doing some cool things on the charts right now. But uh, but Josh, I mean, not Josh, Ross uh, wrote wrote it originally. And it's, it's pretty great. So uh, this is a snippet of uh, Ross's version. Cause I get so overcome with anxiety Like there's an enemy living inside of me Like a mocker yelling out, telling lies to me And I don't feel brave, but I don't have to be Cause I walk through the valley of shadows And it scared me half to death But you're with me everywhere I go So I don't give up yet My fear would surely kill me If I didn't know the truth The things that I'm afraid of are afraid Things that I'm afraid of are afraid of me. May. May. It's what's happening in CCM. Okay, so this is uh, what's happening in CCM, Joseph. Um, updates on current artists. So did you know? Why are you smiling? Like I'm gonna say something well, stupid. Well, I'm, I'm just I'm in, I'm anticipating. This is big stuff. Ben Fuller released a music video for his song, Chasing Rebels. Okay. Which I don't know why it got a music video. It's not a single, is it? I don't know. It's a lot of money to put behind. Yeah. Isn't it? Sure. 
I'm very I'm careful not to bash any artist. That's not a bash. So, that's not. I mean, it kind of sounded like one. Really? Yeah, you're like it's a lot of money to put behind a song that's not your single. No, but I'm just saying, like, is it a big song? I don't know. There you go. That answers the question. Um, Moving on. Ren Collective released a song called Whosoever. Did you know that? Ren Collective. Honestly, it's been a while since it's I've heard been, anything from Ren it's Collective. It's been a minute. Yeah. I think it was a year ago. My Lighthouse. Ugh, such a good my song. My Lighthouse. Shining in the darkness. darkness. I'm it's a good song. you safe to shore. <laughs> get, get all, get all into the sure. It's a good one. Um, uh, Brandon Heath actually just celebrated uh, at Centricity his uh, his number one party for his uh, his big number one. He's had. Uh, I know you're gonna see me do it. If anybody can't, you, you can't can do, do it. it. And I'm do it. And I'm um, which is actually really cool. Did you know That's he's like he's like a five time Grammy nominee artist? No way. Yeah, five. I think he's five times Grammy. Grammy. Grammy nominated and an eight time Dove winner, I believe. Oh, well, the Dove? That makes sense to me, but Grammy? Yeah, Grammy. Maybe it was Emmy. Nice. Maybe he was in a movie. I don't know. I don't um, know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. He could be. Uh, and then and then last but not least, certainly not least, uh, Stephen Curtis Chapman has launched a pre-sale for his upcoming album, Still, which I'm really excited about. I'm a big Stephen Curtis Chapman fan, uh, and it's been a while since we've gotten good music from him. Like, not good music, but just music in general. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. That was, <laughs> that was almost a burn. That's not what I meant. I'm not trying to burn anybody. I hope we're just aware of that. I appreciate everybody. <sighs> Kobe. He's, al- he's always trying to bash other artists. That's like what he's known Justin! for in CCM. <laughs> Dude! I'm just kidding. I'm so not. I'm just kidding. That's not funny. It's not funny. Yeah. Because it's not true. Uh, he's, but, he's so kind. But I'm super excited to hear what uh, Stephen Curtis has got. I like his yeah. deep cuts the most. I'm a big fan of his radio singles, but deep cut Stephen, man, he yeah. just, he, he's got the stuff. And his sons, though. Yeah. Colony House. They're great. I went to a concert for Colony House uh, literally probably about a week ago. No, wait. You well, did? Yeah. You saw Colony House a week ago? I did. Where was I? I actually had that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Are you serious? I'm actually really sorry. I I think it was after that because it was with a, a whole group of people that you didn't know. Do you think I care? And <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Hey, my buddy Kobe's coming. I we have a podcast really together and it. practically like, see each I, other every day. I felt really bad about not Whatever, inviting dude. you. I literally is did. Is that why you invited me to the live concert? Because you felt bad about no, not that inviting was, me? No, I, I think it was like before even the Colony House thing kind of came about. Because it was I was invited by my roommates and we were invited over to like college friends from Liberty for like dinner. Uh-huh. And it felt like very like Oh, exclusive. so it's only for people who went to college. And so, yeah, I just, I, I it felt yeah. weird for me. To, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I will do that next hey, time. Hey, if one of you guys are listening and you want me to come to a Colony House show with you, I'll go. Um, go Joseph let me down. I did. He did. I'm not a good friend. Just because I didn't go to college, that's why. Sometimes um, I just, I just space Now that I'm it. in this somber mood, I think we should take us to Sad Songs with Joseph. Oh, take it to Sad Songs? Wait, I, hold up. You're forgetting the biggest thing that we were about to bring up. Oh my gosh, what? Eminem is Christian now. <laughs> is that, no, so He's what Christian. Do you, what do you mean by that? Eminem, I saw an article just recently that said, like, Eminem, like, hold up, let me bring it up. Because so we already I, I have think, NF. So I don't think that Eminem is Christian. What? But what? he was on it, he was on, so DJ Khaled released an album, right? Okay. okay. And it was, I forgot what it was called, but it has a bunch of songs that, so the song that Eminem is on is with Kanye, and it's Use This Gospel. Yes. That's what the song's called. There's another song that said, God Did. But then there's another song that says, um, Juice World did so. It's kind of I don't know if it's not technically a Christian album, but it's got. Christian but I think themes. it has Chris, It has Christian lyrics. So we're in not it. telling you. We're not endorsing so, you to go listen. So to this. people think that Eminem is a Christian artist, which there's a bunch of articles saying now there is. Yeah. Now that he is, but if you go back to his last album that he just released, August fifth, his cover art. Yeah. Has the horns. Oh. On oh. like straight up, it's it's the curtain. Well, maybe the, he just switched it up. Yeah. I don't know. I don't I'm know. I'm just but saying. It's so every, I mean, John Reddick. I turn me around. Look up Eminem Christian, and he is like, it's like Eminem surprises industry after rapping about Jesus. Radical behavior change due to becoming a, a born again Christian. But it had to been a month. A it had to been a month ago because August fifth was when he released. Man, NF's gonna be without a job here shortly. Yeah. But here's the thing. Here's the, it's, it's, the, it's the bro. It's the it's the it's the seed that's planted. Right, so yeah. that could be a seed. Yeah, in Eminem's. That's heart. positive. It could thinking. be a seed in Eminem's heart, or all of his millions of fans. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, 
I, I think it's cool that there's so much mainstream Christianity going on, as warped as some of it is. You know what I mean? Well, like, that's, yeah. that's not, like, a hot take. Sure. Like, pop culture and, like, the world has a tendency to morph Christianity into their own kind of mold. Yeah. But I think any gospel that is centered around Jesus <laughs> okay. is better than no gospel. <laughs> I thought you just say any gospel is better than no gospel. <laughs> just like, you no, know, and, any gospel centered around, around Jesus, Jesus. That's good. That's I said that. Yeah, and you didn't let me finish. <laughs> I, know, I just <laughs> no, but, any gospel. But you know what I'm saying? Like, to me, it's like, even if they're not living it out, like, God can use anything. He can use, like, that, he can use that. You know what I mean? Even yeah. though they're not believers necessarily, or maybe they are, but yeah. even if they're not living it out and their their actions aren't demonstrating Christ, like, he can still use that. So sure. it's a win for Christianity, in my yeah. opinion. I agree. Why are you looking at me like I'm not? <laughs> I'm not looking at him in any particular way. Calvinist. No. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, no, what? What? Just cut that out. We're not, trying to, we're not, we're not you, trying to start a war. Are you a closeted Calvinist? <laughs> I'm just saying I don't like to talk about it sometimes. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm serious. This is sensitive discussion. It's not. Everybody has their takes. Yeah, but like Calvinists get a really bad rap. It's okay, Joseph. No, we're We love to... you. <sighs> Any person watching this should know that we love you no matter what wrong opinions you have. <laughs> oh, I'm just gosh. kidding. Just, but seriously, it's okay, guys. Yeah, guys we anyway, love Joseph. No, I... I appreciate that. I feel very loved. Um, oh. I, what I was going to follow up with you was just saying, like, <laughs> um, was that I do think that if you have, like, one of these big... I've always wondered, like, the impact that it would have if, if someone were to get really radically, like, transformed, like, yeah. very clearly, like, A, B. Because I feel like even with Justin Bieber, it's been a very progression. Like, it's it's been slow. I mean, because he's always kind of been That's Christian, true. not Christian, going through some stages and stuff. Um you know what? That's true. I think of him as the most radical change, though. I mean, Kanye, Kanye was a pretty, was pretty radical, radical change, but, like, the thing about Kanye is that, like, you know, he's a very radical person in general. Sure. And I feel like whenever I'm he came for to president. Christ, I, will, I just feel like whenever he said, hey, I'm all about this, I'm all about Christ, yeah. I think, in, to some degree, some people were wondering, is this going to last because it's Kanye? Well, he's hot and cold with everything. It's yeah, like, and it's it's hard. I would I've always kind of yearned to see someone like actually like it's like so evident that it's like wow, like I, what just happened I to this think, person? Yeah, I think Bieber's our closest yeah. rendition of that. I mean, and he also still definitely lives with the world. Like, you know, he runs with the yeah. world. He he is living in that life, but but I almost like his faith is going to look different. Like he is He's lived a weird life, weirder than anybody. It is hard. I'm not saying I mean, you're he's so right. in the limelight. You're I'm not so... saying he's right. I'm yeah. just saying. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, we got scripture, we got the Bible, That's and hopefully, right. we live as as close as we can to that. Am uh-huh. I right? Can I get an amen? That's right, man. Amen. amen. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I feel like this actually goes perfectly into our next segment, which is a new segment this week called hot takes called hot takes this has been a hot take podcast i feel like yeah hot takes uh, i'm all about it man this is just real man let's be real it is real yeah i get it nervous is about real. being real get it? sometimes israel uh, huh israel like it is real israel <laughs> like like the country <laughs> like israel <laughs> it's biblical yeah it's biblical it's just it's oh like my gosh random. C- cut that out <laughs> anyway <laughs> what's your hot take we, oh yeah, the one we've been teasing you about for the last three episodes. Today's hot take is something that I feel like I actually talk a good amount with worship leaders. Yeah, and I'm not trying to like start a fire. I'm not trying to be start anything crazy. In my soul. So yeah. fan the flame, and I think my take honestly is not that big of a deal. It's not a hot take. It really is not. I feel like once I genuinely explain myself and my perspective, it's like it's kind of like I always try to approach things from a very like objective standpoint. You're and one. On the I'm Enneagram. a one on the Enneagram. So that means I'm going to view things from like it's black or white, not a lot of gray. And this one has a little bit of gray, but I don't think it's that much gray. Anyway, yeah. is God's love reckless or really more the opinion on the song Reckless Love? Is it okay for people to or churches to sing Reckless Love? Corey Asbury, would you the like chat. to give your opinion and then mine or sure. mine first then yours? Well, mine's going to be probably looser than yours. <laughs> we'll go for it, man. <laughs> but um not looser. I feel like like I didn't think about it when the song came out cuz I was younger. Like I was just like, "Oh, I like the song. Yeah. It's great." And but um I think when you break it down, yeah, God's love is not reckless. He's a very calculated God. You know, mm-hmm. everything it ha- is happening for a reason. He 
has a hand in everything. And, like, that's like saying he's, like, hasty. Like, he's not a hasty God. He's just, he is. You know what I mean? He's not in a hurry. He's not slow. He just is. And I think recklessness kind of plays into that. Like, he's not just loving outrageously that makes no sense you know he's loving very concisely and it's it's very purposeful like his love is mm-hmm. purposeful and i think that's what true love is is love that is led with purpose yeah and so i get i get the idea though like in a room mm-hmm. i get he's hearing that and being like oh that's cool yeah like the reckless love of god it, it's just so radical i almost feel like radical love is what they're thinking of when they yeah. said reckless. Mm. So that's that's pretty good. That's pretty much everything I was gonna say in the sense but, of but what are you gonna say? Well what I was gonna say is that objectively God's love is not reckless. That's what I'm gonna say. Like, like if yes. we're looking from God's perspective, like he like you said, he loves with so much intention and like it all makes sense to him, right? Sure. The whole point that I think uh, Corey Asbury, he even wrote like a Facebook post. It was, he was trying to communicate from a human perspective, God's love can be like perceived as reckless because it's like leaving the 99 sheep to find the one, right? It's relatively Which, reckless. Yeah. When from you our think perspective, about it. we're like, that doesn't make any sense. Um, but, and so if you're singing the song from that, per, you know, from that viewpoint or whatever, where you're like, from our human perspective, God's love is makes perceived no as sense. reckless. Sure, makes no or makes no sense, radical, reckless, like it all I get it. But I think really when we boil it down to is like from an objective standpoint, biblically is God's love reckless? And I would say no. no. So but that's where this, I think But you does have the to, song work? And that that's what I'm saying. If if I, I feel like a church has to use discretion or in order to like use it or not. If it's if it's divisive in your church, first of all, explain the song correctly. Be like, okay, this is what it actually means. We're not saying that God's love is objectively reckless because it's not, but from a human perspective, we can see it as that. If you explain that and people are still divisive over it, sure. I would not sing it in your, in your church because the whole point of the church is to unify the body of Christ and for no there to be like no division, nothing that's setting people ablaze and at odds with one another. Yeah. And there are, I think, are some churches that are just really chill in general, like mm-hmm. Non-denom churches in, in general tend to be pretty chill. They're Whereas pretty Baptist chill. churches are going to have probably a more hot take or oh, like yeah. super... Well, I grew up Baptist. Yeah, you didn't I did grow too. up Baptist. Oh, I grew up like I forgot. sort of charismatic, sure, I could but remember. then uh, Presbyterian. Got it. Yeah, yeah well, Baptist. I grew up in a Baptist church and I remember... So my best friend growing up was... His dad was the music pastor at our church. And mm-hmm. I remember they had very like strong opinions on it in that regard. Like God's yeah. love is not reckless. And I sing the mess out of that song oh. so i didn't think about it that much and i honestly yeah. didn't think about it until people brought it up like it became a hot topic and I was well like, it's a beautiful song it's, it's probably one of the best written worship songs i think i've ever heard one of my favorite yeah which is interesting yeah it's but good. that song makes me feel something like i i yeah. sing those words and i'm like that's insane you know what yeah. i mean but and so to that point i think it gets this point across in a way as yeah. long as you go in with the right idea you know, mm-hmm. but it's it's a good. I think if you're well informed, and you know what you're singing, that's good. But if you're singing the song and you're kind of just like you get emotionally wrapped up in it, and you're not really like, and that's the thing, dude. That's a hot take in and of itself. Emotional worship. Music, worship. Emotional worship is tricky because music, yes, should stir our emotions. But if it ever causes you to not think about what you're singing or like Tonight. intentionally like understand what you're singing to. Then it's like, what are we doing? Because I mean, you could go to a Coldplay concert and people are raising their hands. I was about to say sing that. a whoa, 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 whoa. Like everyone can, everyone can do that because you can get emotionally swept away into the moment. But like worship should be so much deeper. It's like emotion paired with like truth. I and was like, yeah. I have always felt that way and felt very. I think. Ooh. Well, where's he going? I don't know. Uh huh. I sometimes think that. Modern worship, it has a tendency, not always, a lot of people do it great, but can have a tendency to manipulate people's emotions into feeling the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And I think the most dangerous part about the Holy Spirit as a concept is you're not always going to feel him. Like that, Mm. I feel like, because when you go to church, you're like, I feel this. Like, I feel God moving. Like, this is amazing. But you go home and you're like... I don't feel like where is God? You your relationship with God falls apart outside of church because 
you don't have the same emotion that you felt in there. You didn't feel the bass rumbling. You didn't feel the, mm-hmm. you know, hear the extra harms coming in at the, you know, and just, ah, like the way it hits. It's like, yeah. like I can feel emotional listening to Adele. Like I can listen to her. That's of something by her. And I'll be like, oh my gosh, like this is coming from like the pit of my soul. Like I feel this. Yeah. Is that the Holy Spirit? No. So it's like, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like, as a church, you have to be careful with some of that. You have to, yeah. as a congregation, I feel like it's not even, almost it's not even the church's problem as much as it is the congregation. Like, we just need to be aware yeah. of that more so as believers. That's so good. You know? Yeah, we shouldn't ever, like, worship worship. That's a good, that's a, that's that's a, a good weird, word. Yeah, it's like, that's a good if, word. You're, if you're only able to worship God in a place where there's, like, loudspeakers or fog machines and big lights and, uh, or lights on stage but then dim in the the crowd yep. if that's your only setting in which you're like that's the only way i'll worship god then you've really put yourself in a and i think a harmful box because like worship is not just uh i mean whatever you eat or drink whatever you do do it all for the glory of god exactly so that's i worship. can worship god by listening to a sermon i can worship god by like literally like singing um in a room where like there's no sound system and i just have a guitar or there's just someone like that's the thing is someone I, I think, and I understand what they're saying. People can go into Presbyterian churches and be like, man, I can't worship here because there's like mm. nothing, you know, I'm singing hymns like from a book. It's like, I get it. It's sometimes harder to experience another worship culture and to feel like super integrated right when you get there. But like, there's a way to worship God, even in places where you're like not super familiar with like how they do it. But as long as there's truth being proclaimed, like that's a, that's reason enough yeah. to like worship. Uh- I, um, one thing I really appreciate about my girlfriend's family is that they, um, so we always, when we did like God time with my family, we called it devotion. Like we just said, Oh, let's do a devotion with the family or whatever. But they always are like, it's time for worship. They go like, we're going to have, we're going to have a worship, Mm. like have a worship, which is so interesting to me. Like it puts into perspective to me, the idea that worship is so much more than music. And like, yeah, I go to a church that is smoke machines and big speakers and the big, like the whole nine, you know what I mean? Mm. None of that's wrong, but you just have to be careful. Yeah. As long as you don't idolize it. And as, as long as it's not needed in order to worship, that's a big thing. Amen. Cause it can enhance things. You know, it's, you know, it's I, not- built, I think it's the body of Christ firing on all cylinders. I think it's everybody using their gifts mm. that they are blessed with. To, to glorify God in the best way you can. It's like my argument to some people who are like, it's it's like some people will take the stance of like, it's it's wrong to do that, like the big production. My argument to that is, especially in a town like Nashville, it's like people, if we, like at a church like, I go to Cross Point, a church like Cross Point has a big production. To scale that back would literally be because they are choosing it. Because these people, the sound guys are amazing at what they do. They'd have to purposely make it sound bad hmm. to make it sound less polished. You know what sure. I mean? Guitar players have to play less good. Singers have to sing less energetic. Like you would have to. So they're doing the best they can. I think yeah. as a body of Christ, we should always give our best. So some churches will have that and it will be an, another level, but that doesn't always mean it's bad. Mm. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a word. That's a good viewpoint. Is what I'm trying to say. Oh, thanks. Yeah, you don't believe in that, huh? You don't believe that? No, no, it's all good. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, that can be hard to read. Sometimes I give people the well, eyes. Well, sometimes you say things, and I'm like, you totally <laughs> think the opposite <laughs> of what I say. <laughs> right no, now. I agree. And now it's part of the show where Joseph comes out and sings a sad song. What's up, guys? Welcome to another segment of Sad Songs with Joseph. Sad Songs with Joseph, Daddy. And today's special, we've got also, just like last week, we covered one of the biggest songs in Christian music. We're doing also one of the biggest songs in Christian music. Can I take a guess? I actually take don't know a this guess. One. I don't know this one. Yeah, sure. I don't. Oh, okay. Um, what's this song called? Let me tell you about my Jesus. My yes, Jesus. It's my Jesus by <sighs> Ann Wilson. He guessed right. I got it. So this one. I'm not. I'm probably not as big of a fan of this one as I was last week of okay. uh, "In Jesus Name," Katie Nicole. Okay. But this one, this one has some potential to do something cool. But that's okay if you don't like it. Okay. I won't be too offended. Okay. All right. So here we go. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Sad just... I'm gonna put auto tune like all over your vocal. <laughs> <laughs> Sad. All right. Let's get in the mood a little bit. Here we go. He makes a way when there ain't no way. 
rises up from an empty grave Ain't no sinner that he can't save Let me tell you about my Jesus His love is strong and His grace is free And the good news is I know that He can do for you what He's done for me Let me tell you about my Jesus And let my Jesus change your life Ah, <laughs> uh, that was good! It was good! I, I'd give that one like a... I'd give that one like... A 75%. It has, it's not as good as the original. Yeah, it's about as good as Thor Ragnarok was. <laughs> or no, sorry, uh, what's the new one? Love, Love and Thunder. Thunder. It's about as good as Love and Thunder. Love and Thunder. Yeah, it's about as good as that. Yeah, so it's fine. Mid. That that one, that one, uh, I feel like, again, has potential. It needs that major lift, I feel like. It kind of does. In Jesus' name really took me to a different planet. It <laughs> I was just kind of swimming in it that It took one. him to Jupiter. And Jupiter, tell me, <laughs> did you sail across the sky? What is that? Uh, drops of Jupiter. Oh, I don't train? know what drops That's of Jupiter train. is. Oh, train. You know train. Yeah, I think I've heard of train. All right, dude. Anyway, we'll catch you next <laughs> week on Sad Songs <laughs> with Joseph. Q&A, Q&A, it's time for Q&A. And we're back in to Q&A. Uh, the issue with that is we didn't uh, do a Q&A before, <laughs> before the, this podcast episode. So I'm going to film like a little video. Hey, guys. What is up? It's me, <laughs> Joseph. Yo, what's up? <laughs> we're recording a podcast, and we're doing a Q&A, and I forgot to ask it. For this Send week. questions now, please. Send questions. We are in dire need. Thank you. All right. I'm going to put the uh, questions thing. Just hit just do q Q and A. Yeah. Q. Oh man. And Q and yo, what is that and symbol, man? Like, what is that? I don't know. It's just it's it's what's forever and always will be the the, the, the and also the, can you can you actually draw it? Like, can any of you guys draw it? I draw it, but it's not like yeah. That. Like you, I do the three with the two dots on. Oh, I don't do that. Can you? No, draw I can't it? draw it. I do the yes. straight line. Yep. And then that. a three, and then oh. down. Yeah. I do a uh, up diagonal. Down, funk you up. Boom, boom. Up, down, funk you up. That's an <laughs> and? Yes, bro. You've never seen Dude, that. Dude, I've never seen Crosby that before. Crosby just did like, <laughs> do that again. What? He it's made like, like a four diagonal. with a diagonal line. Boom. And he's like, boom. that's an and. Crosby, what is that? Do you have a pen? You have a pen it's a symbol for Satan no. is what it is. It, lo- it looks like a demonic. Now you're having me. It looks like, like yes, a demonic. <laughs> Crosby, that makes no Sense at all. I yes. do the. Uh, does anybody do like the three? You just seen the three with the bottom and the top dot? It looks like a division symbol, but it's a three instead. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a yeah. It's like a you line lines, and though? then a three and then a line. I don't do the lines. I do dots instead. Oh, but same thing. Yeah, same I think it's the same thing. That's what I do. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the... that was really bad. <laughs> hey, do you, you want to tell them what movie? What? <laughs> I was gonna say, do so you want to say something super intimate about me? Sometimes what? I miss high fives and my hands feel sweaty. On purpose. Like oh, I, really? I purposely miss them so people don't know. Why are them. your hands sweaty? I, when I get hot, I just are sweat. Are you nervous? I, I think he's nervous. One, right here. What? I pulled it up. What do you have? Number three, right there. That's not. That's Chinese. Oh. No, bro. That's different ways to do. No, that hold up, like hold up. Chinese. Are you talking about the the three with the line through it? No, no. I'm talking about this one right here. Bro, that's bro, weird. That's that, not weird. Wait, that's... hold up. Let me see it. Bro, that's a boat. <laughs> Yo, check this out. Okay, so this is the one. It's the I don't know. But zoom in on it. You can oh. zoom. I can I zoom in? You can. I don't think I, don't I can. Think can. Okay. No, well, I thought you could too. Well, if you take a screenshot, then you can click the no, little thing just, on the side. No, just no. It's right, this whatever. one. It's this one. Gosh, I can't do it. Hold up. Just bring so it that, camera. that Guys, one right we, there. We could just pull up the clip. Okay. It's that yeah. one. Just put it. I'll just put it. Out. It's that you, one right you're there. You're so weird. You what do you mean I'm weird? <laughs> you're so awkward. I'm so normal. He's so awkward. I'm so You've normal. You've never seen that. See, look though. There's pictures of the sign that you guys make and the other one. that Yeah. Together. I think actually I like. I like the one with the line drawn through the bass. I should start doing it that way. That's cool. It kind of looks like just money. Yeah. But yeah, it's it a three, does. you know? Um, we, what was, we like what were you going to say? I'm sorry I interrupted you, Joseph, about... Um, that was risky. <laughs> oh, was it? <laughs> you just I, threw his, I threw I, it. I, I knew. I, dude, I played baseball. Like, yeah, I, I, I had it Oh, yeah, that means yeah. you're really good at throwing yes, expensive iPhones. Absolutely. Did you not see how it, I chucked it, that it shirt at you earlier? Yeah, it's terrible. Like, I was going to say earlier... We 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 love to go see movies together. Take your hand off. Uh, what? What? 
<laughs> we love to go see movies together, and we have this thing called the AMC Pass where we get to see 12 movies a month for $20. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. 12 <laughs> movies a month. Dude, they don't come out with like that many movies. Not that many good movies. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. And this is an example of a time where I was like, hey, and this is the great thing. For 20 bucks a month, we can take adventures yeah. and we can watch a movie we may ne- not necessarily like watch if we were going to pay full price for it. Yeah. And I saw this this movie that I had no idea about. It was PG-13. <laughs> it was PG-13. It was a movie called Breaking with John Bo- uh, Boyega. Yeah. It actually looked good when I saw the trailer. Was it really? I didn't see the trailer. We both we saw the trailer in the same theater together. Well, I don't remember the trailer. And I just thought I just saw that it had decent ratings and it was PG-13. So I was like, all right, so it's not gonna be there's not gonna be anything crazy. At least I uh, that was the hope. And we saw it and that's why I'll flip over to you. Oh my gosh! That was the slowest movie I have ever... John Boyega is an amazing actor. But that movie moved like molasses. Yeah, we, Dude. We were making jokes like in the theater. Uh, he, he brought it up first, but they would pan. Just Every like, shot was like this. Crosby, can you give us a pan real quick? Just show demonstrate what a pan is. Yeah, slow pan. Every shot started with a pan like that. Just... Slow and then towards the object. Like everything. There was no, it was the slowest movie. You know that movie Zootopia with the slots working the bank? Yeah, what? They were what? working the cameras this time. Uh, it was, it was rough. Joseph, that joke made me want to literally throw up. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we were watching this and even no joke, it was so quiet. There wasn't really a lot of music. And I, I felt bad because we were it, talking. Like, we were talking a lot. Well, we weren't talking a lot, but like we were talking an amount that a normal people would talk in a movie. Yeah. But like it was a so quiet. Yes. And b, like, th- there was like nobody in there. So like they there they, they weren't talking. Except there was one guy. Uh, he was definitely not okay. There was a guy sitting directly behind us in the back left corner. Yeah. That <laughs> was making first of all weird noises. He was he sneezed. Five times in a row. Five times. He sneezed five times in a row, but he also was like grunting and stuff, making all these weird noises back there. He also like, during the quietest part of the movie, like opened a bag of chips. It was like, it was so loud. I was like, dude. He also left like four times to go to the bathroom or something like that. Philip is One of the times he comes back up and he trips on the stairs and like kind of does this weird like, like. Um, yeah. I don't know how to explain. He it, was but not off balancing. I think uh, he was not of sober mind. He was probably not. He was. He was, he was either high or he was drunk. And I hate saying that because I I just can't stand being around that. But well, I, look. So the movie was about the movie we watched is about a guy who goes into a bank with a bomb. And so I was like, Joseph, based on a true story. Based on a true story, it's actually the story itself is really interesting. Yes. But um, I was like, Joseph, what do you? What if he has a bomb? Like as a joke? Which you is didn't a, say that. I think I just was. No, worried. I said that, and you were like, Oh yeah, stop, dude. And then he like. Was getting all funny, and I was like, "What's wrong?" He like leaned over to me, he's like, "Kobe, I'm scared." I did. I literally was like, "Bro, I'm scared." I just, I, I have I the like, fear. He's just some guy, bro. I'm, I'm just getting, not to get super like um, morbid here, but like ever since I heard about that shooting that happened the with Joker? the Dark Knight, yeah, I've had a, a, a fear of movie theaters, especially for movies that deal with like traumatic topics, such as this one yeah. or Joker, the movie. I refused to go see it in theaters because I thought really? it would bring in the wrong crowd. I saw it four times. Bro, my I, buddy um, was there in Denver huh? when that happened. Y- y- she was there? My buddy was. was oh, he was there? Yes. No way. With the Dark Knight? It was for a stuttering conference. No and way. He was there in the theater next. You're kidding. I swear, bro. Wait. It was the craziest thing. Wait, seriously? Yes. That's the craziest thing. And then he came to school like that next week, and everybody's like, dude, what? That's the craziest crazy. thing. That's that was pretty horrifying. I remember that happening. Yeah, that was nice. Um, that was actually, yeah, pretty pretty intense. I, You know what's funny? I have that same fear. Like, I think about that specific scenario when I go see movies. Like, I, when you were like, Kobe, I'm scared. I was like, ah. Like, I was kind of low key. I low key was kind of like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but, like, you know, he would probably pick a better showing time. Maybe. I, mean, I don't know. There's three people in our theater. It, but it would just, I don't Unless know. Unless he's man. targeting you. I get scared, bro, sometimes. It, and again, it only depends on the movie. Like, some movies, I don't really. Opening night scare me, bro. Wait, seriously? Opening, yeah. If I go to an opening night showing, because that's when the most people are there. What so. was the last movie you went to, like an opening night? Um, uh, Thor: Love and Thunder. You went opening night? Mm-hmm. Wow, that stinks. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was really disappointing. 
uh, because that most most Marvel movies, if you go to see them or Star Wars, people are very interactive. People are like super crazy about any anything that ever like happens. No way home. It was the most dead theater for a Marvel movie. Really? No one. I think like the only clap that it really got that was kind of like woo was when John Krasinski shows up as Mister Fantastic That's, in uh, Fantastic wrong Four. Movie. Huh? You said uh, Multiverse. Of Ma- you said Love and Thunder. Oh, dang. I'm, I'm mixing up my movies. That's Multiverse of Madness. Multiverse of Madness I saw opening night, and Thor Love and Thunder I saw opening night. There were no claps in Thor Love and Thunder because there were no cameos, really. Um, and Multiverse of Madness, it was also dead. So the past two Marvel movies I've seen opening night were absolute bombs. Dude, what was the what was the last good Marvel movie? Other than, like, No Way Home? Is that it? I mean, to the, my hot take is that No Way Home is, like, fine. You're fine. <laughs> Do you know they re-released it and like Thanks. updated all the visuals and stuff? Oh, did they? Yeah, like the CGI and stuff looks like way better. Yeah, That's what the re-release. Save it. That was part of the re-release. Was like they like updated all the graphics. I mean, dude, <laughs> this movie's like only been out for like six months. It's already got a DLC. Yeah, I don't really get it. Weird. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. I thought I thought No Way Home was pretty good, but it's not going to age well. That's my theory. It. What's not going to age well? Like the just the movie. Like, I think what it, about it was it? fan service for like our generation. But you give it twenty years, and those scenes where like everyone was going crazy are really awkward. It's not awkward. It I've is. Seen the cu- it's not that weird. You're a you're you you drink the Kool Aid when people like have theories. You do. Oh my gosh. You have a thing with that. All right, I got some questions in. Um, We're still working on the intro for still this show. On the theme song. <laughs> you want to play them yours? Let's play it over the track right now. I'll play we're, it right we're now. We're just putting it in right now. We're 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 no no no. I'm just playing it on the microphone. <laughs> Oh gosh. Okay, that'll sound worse. You're not gonna do it any justice. No, it's, it's, it sounds like show them the first one. It sounds like a Mario Kart track. This is this is the one that I like. Yeah. Anyway, that's the, that's the first one. Dude, I actually, I'm putting that in all the way. That so one that was way actually fun. We're this is the next one. This is I can't stand listening to this one anymore. No, and don't Kobe, play it. Kobe was texting me. He's like, "It's fine, bro. It's fine." Well, I didn't want to hurt his feelings. Yeah, just tell me the dang truth, bro. I told you. I was you like, seemed, "Bro, you can tell me you, you don't seemed, like it." You seemed upset at me. No, this is not good. I, mean, Joseph, I was literally ripping off good well, makeup. Mythical morning. I'm sorry. I knocked all mine out of the park. I just felt bad, that- bro. <laughs> he did. All his sound great. No, I'm here. I'm we literally, go. Next I'm one. Literally kidding. Isn't that the same song? Just slow down. Good yes. mythical morning. <laughs> like literally, it sounds exactly like Good Mythical Morning. So you can't blame me. Well, I'm gonna keep the same melody because the melody's good, and I'm, we're gonna we're make gonna, it. Whatever the intro more... you hear for this episode is what he came up with. I told him to take it over because I was be, tired of I'm it. I'm doing something mad simple. I already know it. It's gonna be like a whistle and a snap, and that's gonna be it. Okay. It's gonna be just like kind of fun and just like, well, there it is. Okay. Yeah, Koji. I love it. Yeah. Um, okay, I got some questions, and we're gonna we're gonna be out of here. All right. Um, Q and A time. <laughs> we're ready for roll the clip. We're not doing it again. Um, <laughs> guilty pleasures, Joseph. Name some. Guilty pleasures. That was sent in by our friend Grace Graber. What? Grace sent that one. Oh, Grace. That's a good question, Grace. That's a good question. Uh, guilty pleasures. Oh gosh, I'm, I, it's got to be some kind of like ice cream or something. Uh, I, I, I don't know. You answer this first. I have to think. I would say mine are like bad movies. Like, have any of you guys seen like like Chicken Little? People say that's a bad movie. I It's a great movie. Oh, thank God. Let's yeah. go. Uh, Chicken, Little, Chicken Little is one of my favorite Disney movies. Wait, you just quoted it the other day. It was like, <laughs> Yeah. Abby, 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 Abby. There's so Gosh. many. There's a, the fish. I mean, um, Mick Pishy, when he talks about like, dude, there's so many. Oh, I, I think I just, everything that, uh, what's his name? How'd you get uh, over there? Over where? There? How'd you get over there? <laughs> what's the what are we talking about? The double bags. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I love what that. What are we talking about? Foxy Loxy. Here, present pretty much. Yeah. You uh, get that movie like down, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. Fish. Like, dude, I, <laughs> I love that movie. Oh, there's so many good lines, dude. That's a good one. That movie is so good. Um, so Chicken Little's like one that I just like is like a guilty pleasure. Cars too is a guilty pleasure. I went straight to food. I don't know why, but wow. that's like guilty pleasure for me. Bad like Star Wars movies. Like I, can, oh, okay. I just quote them. Like, so you went entertainment. I'm thinking like my guilty pleasure is like ice cream. Like in oh. general, just like I'll get like a pint of ice cream and then just down the whole thing. Really? My yeah, brother's man. like that, dude. He can kill some ice cream. Oh, really? My brother can kill ice cream. Oh, man. I can't do it like that. I just, it gets too cold for my teeth. 
Oh, really? Yeah, I have sensitive teeth. Uh, Do you have sensitive teeth? Well, you vibe like a, a guy with sensitive teeth. No, you're a wimp. That's what you are. No, I might have like bad enamel. You gotta shove it down like a man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It hurts. <laughs> It hurts. <laughs> like, go. my teeth, it hurts. Yeah. <laughs> okay, ah! we, go to the, we can go to the next one. I'm going to find another question. Someone said, how many questions am I allowed to send? <laughs> and that was the only question they sent. No <laughs> way. That's so funny. That's like, if that was a troll, it's so amazing. Oh, uh, actually, okay, they got one. If you can meet anyone from... We already did this one. Oh, okay. What instrument have you always wanted to play but never learned? That's a great question. Electric guitar. Oh, piano. Oh, no way. Well, I mean, I like, like we learn, we know them. Like, like yeah. But like, you know what I'm saying? But basic, like, like super basic. Like, I can play a C chord and a D chord and an E chord on a piano. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you could find your way around it. Yeah. Just like I can sort of find my way around electric guitar, but I don't know how to, like, play really intricate things. Tone. I don't have tone. Yeah. Like, I want to be able to play that thick worship chord. Like, I would say, like, I play guitar, but I, like, I, I play piano like a f- seven-year-old plays piano. Mm. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I, like, I don't put that in my, like, maybe early on in my career I did. What if I the did? seven-year-old's a prodigy, dude? Well, it's not me. Okay. So, <laughs> um, Last I was, question? I would say piano. Okay, got one see. more. Oh, man. One more for the people. Whoa, 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 one more question. Oh, this is... Have you seen the new Lord of the Rings TV show yet? No. Okay. Well, we'll talk about that next week. Okay. We'll talk about it next week because somebody asked, what do you think about the show? And I haven't seen it yet either. Okay. So we'll both... We'll watch it, do a little homework, and then we'll talk about it next exactly. week. Exactly. Um, that's a good one, though. Um, sorry, I'm just looking for a question. Take your time, Kobe. <laughs> it's Crosby. I just saw yours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not reading that. Um... <laughs> Can you, uh, somebody said, what are some things you regret? Wow. Wow. Getting deep here. What do you regret, Joseph? I regret. What do I regret? This is a really dumb one, but I regret not finishing college. You didn't finish? Well, because I, I have one more math class. Wait, are you kidding me? Do you one more a, math class. You don't class. have a degree? I don't have a degree, no. What? I just, I haven't finished my math class yet. Once I finish that, I'm good. And my regret is, is is that I've been signed up for that class since last October, paying for it monthly. What? I haven't this is taken the it. Joseph O'Brien thing I've ever heard of, dude. Yeah. Did we talk about your taxes already? No, we are I not going to talk about my this taxes. This boy, freaking. Can we talk about this ago. legally? Yeah, it's fine. You no paid, way. You I, paid him. You're I good. paid my taxes, but it took a while. Well, five months ago, <laughs> Joseph and me were like hanging out in his kitchen or whatever, talking about like finances because we're not the richest guys in the world. And absolutely um, not. And I was like, "Hey, man," um, I didn't even say "Hey, man." You were just like, "Hey, man, can I be honest with you?" And I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, man, sure." And he was like, "I haven't paid my taxes." I was like, "What do you mean? Like, what are you like a few hundred bucks?" He's like, "Like three thousand dollars." Like, I haven't paid my taxes. Like, it's a, I haven't. I'm and I, so ashamed. I was like, "Dude, what are you like? What are you talking about?" I mean. My dad put it into perspective. He was like, they're not going to come after you for three grand. But, like, it was a big deal. And so he finally, we played a show. He finally got them paid off. Well, no, the thing is he brought it up, like, a couple months later. I asked him. I asked yeah, him randomly. Just randomly. He's like, so, have you paid your taxes yet? <laughs> I was like, you know what? That's funny you ask because I have it and it's really stressing me I out. I was afraid that they are going to take I, my friend. I couldn't, like, pay it when I had no money to give them. And, like, uh, I tried to, like, sign up for their monthly plans, but the, the online website was, like, uh, malfunctioning and not letting me do uh, it. Oh, yeah, sure it was. No, it was. I'm, I'm dead serious. Right. I wanted to sign up for a monthly plan, and the website was, like, erroring oh, every no, time I like did that. It's uh, kind of like the VA and uh, break, breaking. <sighs> Unbelievable. That's the movie. Yeah. yeah. But I, t- I paid my taxes. So, kids, pay your taxes whenever you have to do that. Pay your right. taxes. Um, my biggest regret is probably not spending enough time with my uh, sister before I moved out. Wow. I love her to death, and she's the coolest. And honestly, she's in the best phase, like, right now. So I wish that I was, like, closer to her, like, here. Like, we're close as siblings, but, like, closer in vicinity. Like, I wish I could, you know, hang out with her on the reg, but I can't. So, Chloe, I love you. But um, I was so wholesome. I love yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's my favorite, so. Q&A time, man. It's, Q&A it, it was, time. it's over. It's over. Thank you, guys. I'm going to grab for, his uh, arm for the remaining of the, the episode. <laughs> Don't do that. I'm going to do it. Yeah. All right. Hey, guys. Thank you for tuning into the Kojo Show. We talked music. And we talked life. 
We'll catch you on the flippity flip. Peace.